the history of Portugal in under 10 minutes. I am Professor Whiskey and I'm speedrun the history of Portugal and I challenge you to speedrun the like and subscribe button. About 25,000 years ago, the Iberian Peninsula started being inhabited by the Neanderthal and it would even be in the current Portuguese land that the last of them went extinct. During the 10th century BC, amongst many people living in the region, we highlight the Celts and later the Lusitanians. The Iberian territories were visited by the Phoenicians, the Greeks and the Carthaginians, which established trading colonies until the Romans came along and invaded the peninsula during the Second Punic War. With an established foothold, they would then, during the 1st century BC, move towards the margin Portuguese territory, facing big resistance from the Lusitanians, led by Viriatus, which, using guerrilla warfare tactics, managed to defeat the Romans time and time again, until being betrayed and killed during sleep by his own peers. During the 3rd century AC, Christianity spread amongst the peninsula, and during the 5th century, barbarian tribes invaded, with the Suevis founding a kingdom in Braga, followed by the Visigoths, who founded theirs in Toledo, later converting to Christianity and conquering the Suevis to effectively rule Iberia. In 711, a Muslim coalition invaded Iberia, killed the Visigoth king at the Battle of Guadalete, and swept through the old peninsula at what one could call medieval lightning speed. The Christians held at the northest part, Asturias, an impregnable mountainous region, and from there the Reconquista started. Thinking adventure of turmoil in the Al Andalus, the newly conquered land to the south gave rise to new kingdoms and estates, and from there emerged the county of Portugal. Intrigues between the Kingdom of Asturias, Galiza, and Leon later, and we arrive to the first half of the 11th century. Afonso Henrique, the heir to the county after the death of his father, Count Henrique, fights his mother for control of the county, as she was the lover of an important Galician noble, fights his cousin, also called Afonso, the seventh of his name, King of Leon for independence, fights the Muslims down south to expand the borders of the newly found Kingdom of Portugal, and then, when the Pope refused to recognize him as the king, he also fights boom, 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 boom. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, Excuse me, my mistake, he offered him a lot of money instead. His dynasty conquers all the way to Algarve, whilst fighting its Christian neighbors to keep their independence, until in 1383 King Fernando dies, with the only heir being married to the Castilian king. I have an in-depth video of this topic in my channel, which will be on the top corner, but basically the people rallied up behind an half-brother of King Fernando, João de Viche, and fight against overwhelming gods to win spectacular battles, winning the war and preserving their independence. However, they knew that they wouldn't be able to withstand Castilian harassment for centuries to come, as it was their only bordering neighbor and it was simply too big. So they went with a bold plan never attempted to toggle up the Arab monopoly on Indian spice trade, sailing across Africa. It took them more than 100 years when Vasco da Gama finally achieved India in 1500, having discovered the coast of Africa, Brazil, Madeira, Açores and other islands in their way. This was the beginning of the Portuguese Golden Age, winning major battles like Dio, Malacca and Cochin, sailing all around the world, establishing the first global empire. The plan worked. They had enough power in an alliance with England since 1373, which allowed them not only to survive Castile and later Spain, but also to become a world power. However, once other European powers with more manpower pools started to join the exploration game, Portugal started losing importance in the world stage. In 1580, King Sebastião went to war in Morocco and was killed. Having no heirs, his cousin, the Spanish King Felipe II, subdued local resistance and became Felipe I of Portugal, establishing the Iberian Union. The next two Felipes would drag Portugal to all the Spanish wars, whilst failing to protect Portuguese territories from French, English and predominantly Dutch incursions. So in 1640, the Duke of Braganza revolted, fought the Restoration War and won and Portugal would then rush to try to recover its lost possessions, regaining control of some, mostly in Africa and the Americas, with the Asian territories being mostly lost. The capital, Lisbon, would suffer a massive earthquake, followed by a tsunami and wildfire, being destroyed. But that was no problem, as gold from Brazil funded the reconstruction of the city in modern fashion. During the Napoleonic Wars, Portugal remained loyal to the British, being invaded, which prompted King João VI to flee for its colony Brazil. Eventually, they would win the war, but the royal court had really fancied to stay in Brazil, so they simply left the British in charge. 
until the people forced them to return, with Pedro staying as the Prince Regent of Brazil. But then, his father died and he was also forced to return, so he declared independence, giving the Portuguese throne to his daughter Maria. Then, his brother Miguel took advantage of the worst chess plays ever and took the throne, so Pedro gave the Brazilian crown to his son, also Pedro, becoming effectively landless and waging a brutal civil war, eventually winning the throne for his daughter. During the scramble for Africa, Portugal would claim some territories basing it on historical discovering rights, proposing the pink map, wanting to unite Angola and Mozambique. But then its sold ally, the British, betrayed them and sent an ultimatum to abandon those territories. King Carlos I had to accept, and this led to a wide republican movement, which led to his assassination together with the heir, Luís. So despair, Manuel I became king, but only for two years, abandoning the country for England. Centuries of monarchy come to an end, and so you enter a period known as the First Republic. Why First Republic? Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. The Republic brought some reforms, but in the end could not solve major economic and social issues, with governments falling in weeks, political assassinations and general turmoil. Portugal officially joined World War I in 1916, on the Entente side, as they were great pals with the British. Laughs in the ultimatum. And they had been fighting already border skirmishes in their Africa colonies, in particular against famous general Lethal Vorbeck. They formed an expeditionary force, SEP, which was sent to fight in France, but they lacked support back at home, especially when a coup led by Sidonio Paes, a pro-German, literally led to them being abandoned. The force would be almost completely destroyed at the Battle of Lalis, due to them holding a chunk of line which was way greater than those of its allies, being their last day on the front and overall an astonishing German offensive. Here is born the legend of Soldier Millions, a soldier who alone with his Lewis machine gun defended his trench against German companies to give time for the Portuguese retreat, later finding himself alone in no man's land, roaming and scavenging to make sporadic fire, eventually returning to Portuguese lines. He would leave to return home at the end of the war. In the end, Portugal didn't benefit from its involvement in the Great War, and the soldiers were welcomed with indifference at home. This, combined with the huge crisis and turmoil, led to a coup by the military, in 1926 and the establishment of an official new dictatorship with a new constitution in 1933 under the command of Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. Salazar was a conservative right-wing Christian and would rule with iron fist, prosecuting all opposition and banning elections, measures that would at least stabilize the country. In the 60s, African independence movements would spark. However, Salazar considered them core states of the Portuguese nation, so conflicts started in Angola, Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau. Even though Portugal belonged to NATO, it found itself isolated from the world, whilst the guerrilla movements were funded by all the Cold War powers. However, Portuguese morale didn't break. Even though Salazar fell from his chair in 68, hitting his head on the ground, which was caused health issues and would lead to his death in the same year. Born poor, ruled poor and died poor. He was replaced by Marcel Caetano, with Caetano alleviating a bit of repression, until 1974, when a military coup was launched, which led to the end of the war, the independence of the colonies, and the democratization and modernization of Portugal. And so, this was the history of Portugal, a country which contributed to world progress, held a place at the grand stage, and eventually lost it all. The rest is history.